the first parameter of comfortness is temperature so that it is the most important parameter so that this particular slide defines conceptualize the concept of thermal comfort uh, comfortness the term thermal comfort is actually describe the person's state of mind in terms of whether they feel too hot or too cold it's so naturally if we ask ourselves how we we are comfort in a working space a working uh, uh, environment so it is mainly we focus of the environmental conditions about near to us in terms of temperatures so depending on the different seasons the comfortness parameters may be changes the environmental factors the other environmental factors such as humidity that also affects as well as different personal factors are also involved in the comfortness like wearing of different types of clothing during the working hours so all these things means mainly we can say that three fundamental things affect the comfortness that is thermal comfortness is environmental factors as well as the personal factors okay so all these things are involved so what do you mean by how we can define this particular comfort the comfort or the thermal comfort specifically is a very difficult to define as we need to take into account a range of environmental work related and personal factors so all all such things are involved so that it is difficult to define when deciding what makes a comfortable workspace temperature so it is difficult because because person to person the requirements are different so that it is difficult to define the best uh, as well as the environment of the city to city country to country is different that things are also make it difficult to define the best way that we can realistically hope to achieve this thermal environment that satisfies the majority of persons in the person. so mainly this calculations or this comfortness is actually so that calculated based on the majority of the persons review or the survey or the we can say that the questionnaire available uh, in in standard uh, uh, formats and uh, this is this is actually the requirement also the laws are also uh, developed by the governments so that the comfortness can be achieved in different workspace by different questionnaires and different uh, uh, technologies also so it it is not only by the technology by this role can be played by different stages that uh, in forthcoming uh, slides it will be clear to you so uh, one more thing is mentioned that this thermal comfort is not just by uh, we can achieve by measuring the room temperature so there are different different types of parameters are also involved with this and uh, it is also said that the depending on the survey from the employee it it can be finalized so there are six different uh, indicators uh, for this comfortness that we will going to review in the forthcoming slides why the thermal comfort is so important so what you uh, uh, i am requesting all of you that you can learn this particular thing that we are a automation or the building automation engineer and i want to develop the automation systems for a particular building so before implementing any th system over there i i should know that what are the requirements in that building so based on the requirements in that particular building i have to develop the automation system so that so that this unit is particularly developed to understand the requirements of the comfortness so that engineering engineering uh, knowledge can be employed for the comfortness so first of all directly the engineering uh, terms are not included directly the solutions are not given in this particular session 
but once we understand the basic concept of this compactness then and then it is possible to deploy all such things so that you should aware of all these laws rules requirements so that it will be easy in the future point of view when actually when you are working in the building automation domain by managing thermal comfort we are likely to improve moral and productivity the main main task of implementing automation in any building that we require to understand that why why they are actually doing such amount of uh, huge amount of uh, uh, utilizing this huge amount of this uh, the uh, the uh, the cost and that for implementation of these things so main motto is yes the main motto is to improve the productivity as well as the moral uh, of this particular in, uh, uh, the environment of these things as well as improvement of the health and safety that aspects are also Uh, behind this building automation concept so if we are not strict on this uh, basic requirements then there is no use of implementing such building automation system in uh, different uh, different areas people working in uncomfortably hot as well as in the cold environment are more likely to behave unsafely because their ability to make decisions and to perform manual task deteriorates this is the very important things we require to understand that the comfortness affects a large huge amount for example some examples are mentioned people may take shortcut to get out of the cold environment if it is a too cold environment no one will be stay over there the employee might not wear personal protective equipments for example like a pp kit and that or helmet and other glasses and that properly in hot environments increasing the risk so because of the already the environment is hot and again they are uh, uh, it is bounded to wear such type of uh, coat and that so it become uncomfortness to the peoples working in that particular area we are not only imagining the building of the malls and that this building automation is a huge scope actually implemented in the industries private sector as well as the public sector so there are three main areas where the building automation scope is there in the personal sector means different homes can also have this then there is a public sector different types of malls and that and then there is industrial sector an employee ability to concentrate on a given task may start or to drop off which increases the risk of error occurring so this all these things are behind this comfortness so that we require to analyze it an automation engineer or the building automation engineer or some 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 sort of the employer of that particular building he want to deploy this automation we should be aware of this risk and make sure that the underlying reason for this unsafe behavior are understood and based on that we actively discourage or we can prevent them so how the things can be adapting to the thermal environment the people adapt their behavior to cope with the thermal environment for example adding or removing clothing all these things are happen we know very well that if we feel warm uh, all these things we can do so this is the natural behavior of human unconsciousness changes in their posture choices of heating moving to here and there all these things are there and different uh, cooling and uh, different heating sources all these things are responsible the problems arise when this choice to remove a jacket to move away from the heat source is removed and people are no longer able to adapt them in some instances the environment within which the people work is product of the processes of the job they are doing so they are unable to adapt to their environment so the adaptation of the environment is solely depending on the comfortness 
what are that six basic factors that mainly affects the comfortness or required to have more attention on the comfortness or finally we can say by the as a instrumentation engineering point of view how we can have the different parameters available to control or to measure the comfortness the most commonly used indicator of the thermal comfortness is air temperature so as this hvac is basically the heating ventilation and air conditioning so all these things are concerned with the basic concept of this hvac it is easy to use and most people can relate to it so air temperature is the most important thing out of these six however air temperature alone is not a valid or accurate indicator of the thermal comfort comfortness that is also clear or thermal stress also it should be always be considered in relation to other environmental and personal factors so this is not only one so what are that six that one by one we will discuss what are the environmental factors the first environmental factor that affect is air temperature this is the temperature of the air surrounding the body it is usually given in degree celsius the second important environmental factor is radiant temperatures the radiant temperatures are the thermal radiation is the heat that radiates from the warm objects so surrounding of that particular uh, uh, working places there may be sources of radiant or warm sources or radiant heat sources radiant heat may be present if there are heat sources in the environment the radiant temperature has a greater influence than the air temperature so air temperature has another influence the radiant temperature has a another influence on we lose or gain the heat to the environment for example which are the different sources of this radiant heat are the sun the fire electric fires ovens walls kiln walls cookers dryers hot surfaces machinery molten metals etc by considering all that uh, all the places where the building automation can be employed that the third environmental factor is air velocity how speed how much speed of that air in that particular zone or area is also decides the comfortness this describes the speed of air moving across the employee and may help cool them if the air is cooler than the environment so the, if the environment temperature is larger then it is possible to make it cool the air velocity is an important factor in thermal comfort for the for example what are that uh, how it can be uh, affecting the comfortness steel or stagnant air in indoor environment that are artificially heated may cause people to feel stuffy okay the sometimes the indoor environments if there are artificially heated type of uh, 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 the uh, places are there then the people can feel stuffy in that environment it may also lead to the build up in odor type of things can also there moving air in warm or humid conditions can increase the heat loss through the convection without any changes in the temperature this this movable air in the warm or humid there there may be warm warm type of environment there may be humid type of environment so that can effect on the increasing heat loss due to the convection without changing in the air temperature that affects in the unchange in temperature physical activity also increase the air movement so how many uh, number of people are present over there and uh, whether the uh, the physical activity is uh, activity is actually the moving type of activity or it is a one uh, uh, one place activity based on that also it get affected so the air velocity may correct it to account for the person's level or physical activity and other factor of this air velocity is small air movement in cool or cold environment may be perceived as a drought as the people are partially sensitive to this environment so some people are sensitive to cold environment some people are sensitive to hot environment this also affects best uh, affects on the control point of view then the fourth environmental factor is humidity 
if the water is heated and it evaporate so what do you mean by this if the water is get heated and it evaporate to the surrounding environment the resulting amount of water in the air the amount of water in the air we call as humidity so what do you mean by this relative humidity it is actually the ratio the ratio between the actual amount of water vapor present in the air and the maximum amount of water vapor that the air can hold at their air temperature so, so maximum capability of uh, the maximum capability of the uh, water vapor that the air can hold okay and the actual amount of water vapor that are actually present in the air that ratio is called as relative humidity so the humidity the relative relative humidity mostly or affect this comfortness how it can be affects that can be given in the next points the relative humidity if it is between the 40 to 70 percent there is no major impact on the therm thermal comfortness for example in workspace which are not air condition condition or where the weather conditions outdoors may influence the indoor thermal environment so outdoor conditions can affect the indoor thermal environment relative humidity may be higher than 70 percent so in such situation the relative humidity may be higher than 70 percent in such workspace where the air conditioning facility is not deployed humidity in indoor environment can vary greatly and may be dependent on whether there are drying processes and this uh, indoor environments humidity mainly affected the drying process for example where the hot hot environment is there mainly that affects the humidity maybe paper mills laundries okay where the steam is given off the high humidity environments have a lot of vapor now now this is required to understand how it affect for example in high humidity environment have a lot of vapor in the air so we know that in high humidity there is a lot of vapor in the air which prevent that affects or that prevents the evaporation of sweat from the skin okay in high humidity environment in hot environments now in hot environment humidity is important because less sweat evaporates when the humidity is high maybe 80 percent plus the evaporation of the sweat is the main method of heat reduction so why we are uh, required to control this particular uh, humidity uh, factor also or parameter also for example in another case where the non breathable vapor impermeable personal protective equipments like ppe is worn so if it is not uh, it, it, it is older one the humidity is inside the garment increases as the wearer sweats because the sweat cannot evaporate and uh, when when someone wears this ppe type of uh, kit it is uh, uh, it will be very difficult to sweat the uh, this part uh, it is difficult for the person to evaporate the sweat if an employee is uh, wearing this type of pp the humidity within the pp will be very very high then the second category of these uh, six parameters are personal factors in personal factors the clothing uh, insulation is required to be considered so how this affects the comfortness the thermal comfortness is very much depends on the insulating effect of the clothing on the wearer so how it can be affected wearing too much clothing for this pp may be primary cause of heat trace even if the environment is not considered warm or hot enough if so person to person this clothing get affected sometimes uh, there may be uh, uh, the issues of the coldness sometimes that that can be the effect of this uh, wearing of the clothes may cause the coldness and sometimes maybe the other type of diseases that can be possible some uh, the sixth important uh, factor that affect the comfortness is work rate or metabolic heat 
what is this the more physical work we do the more heat we produce the more heat we produce the more heat need to be lost so we don't more heat so that is the fundamental requirement the impact of metabolic rate on thermal comfort is very very critical a person's physical characteristics should always be borne in mind when considering their thermal comfort as i already told that person to person the things are changes as the factors such as their size weight age fitness level sex can all impacts on this metabolic heat comfortness so how how the measuring uh, how how we can uh, proceed for the measuring of this thermal comfort so measurements are not by just the deploying the technology but there are different ways also by that we can measure the comfortness so so there there may be survey survey type of things or some checklist can be prepared uh, by the uh, employer of that uh, particular company or that particular building so so this is general uh, general guidelines given and at the last uh, we can deploy the uh, the technological concepts also to have to achieve the comfortness at the last so what what type of checklist is uh, required to be prepared to find out the measurement uh, the comfortness is there or not in that particular building so uh, such type of questionnaires are required to be prepared for example the factor of air temperature then the radiant temperature humidity air movement metabolic rate pp all such questionnaires are prepared and uh, and the survey is taken from the employees so for example in the questionnaire in related to air temperature it it may ask that does the air feel warm or hot okay so based on such uh, surveys and the uh, requirement because it is difficult to difficult to measure the comfortness because person to person the things are different so that survey can be beneficial in most of the cases to deploy technology also so how to controlling this uh, controlling uh, uh, how we can control this uh, particular thing uh, how the possible to deploy this control part in this thermal comfortness so not directly by technology by different types of actions also for example the first is control measures so what are that that different control measures so there are six main control methods we can use the first one is control the environment so how we can do this by replacing hot air with cold air or replace cold air with hot as per the requirement second point we can have humidify or dehumidify depending on the requirement sometimes humidity we require to humidify the environment sometimes we require to humidify dehumidify the environment or the air content the air uh, the increase air movement by ventilation or air conditioning that things also we can deploy we can reduce the draft discomfort by directing the ventilation or air movement so that it does not blow directly on to the employee so by uh, empl uh, employing the baffles and that so that we can direct the ventilation points or the air movement points the second control measure is separate the source of heat or cold from the employee so if there any heat or cold source close to the employee there should be separation the continuous uh, coldness uh, near to employee affects or uh, continuous hotness also get affected erect the barriers that shield or insulate the work area to restrict access redesign jobs to remove the uh, to uh, remove the employee from the that particular area so different types of uh, not only by deploying the uh, the sensors and that it can be achieved but by uh, implementing separations insulation that that things are also required to uh, 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 required also required in there the third uh, thing is control the task so this is actually the some some concepts are related with the work environment so that we require to understand it to restrict the length of time that employees are exposed 
to hot or cold condition that can control that uh, means by controlling their time and that duty hours and uh, the working hours on that particular source can uh, can be possible control the amount of work and rate of work employee are expected to do then introduce mechanical aid sometimes some mechanical arrangements can be uh, implemented to get uh, to have the comfortness then control of the clothing so not required if if even if required uh, the ppe kit and that in that case only for the particular time slot it can be wear in other time it is uh, it can be removed so such type of uh, things can be deployed then fifth one is allow the employee to to make behavioral adaptations so that personal things can also be uh, we can uh, employ there so that they can adjust the temperature their self so the provision is given there so that they can their self uh, adjust the things as per their requirements then there is a monit uh, uh, monitoring of the employees also there by different types of supervision trainings and that such type of things are also required to be uh, required to take care of this and the persons they are working there the pregnant employees and that all such things are required to be considered the Ill illness disability medication all things are covered in this monitoring of the employee so the other type of uh, aspect of the measurement is administrative controls by the owner of that particular building or the director of that particular building can have the administrative type of controls are possible to to increase the thermal comfort all these things are uh, uh, we are we are revising for the improvement ultimate goal is improvement of comfortness then then this is important point of uh, point for our uh, point of view as per the control point of view are the engineering controls so there are there should be the first choice to reduce the or eliminate the hazard so this is the first task that we require to be handled to eliminate the hazard that is the primary goal of this engineering controls although the initial cost of engineering controls may seem high it has been found that the implementation cost is often offset by resulting improvements to productions so this can be bear by the improvements in the production the cost can be bear the initial high cost can be bear any practical solution to controlling thermal comfort is likely to require a combination of different options developed in consultation with the employers so different uh, practical solutions are possible uh, by consultation with the employer or employees and their representatives by discussion with them we can develop the comfortness systems so in which are the major areas where the engineering controls can be employed the first important area where we can have the controls is heating system as we are well aware with this many types of heating systems are available for example hot air based heating system we can implement water based central heating system using radiators we can use combined heat and ventilation system using air conditioning system then there is electrical heating system okay there is underflow heating system there may be overhead heating system most of such systems are very very useful however the beneficial effect uh, may be restricted in some situation to immediate locality of the heat source so depending on the heat source the benefit may be restricted then the second uh, engineering controls that we can employ is air movement we can control there are many methods for increasing the air movement for example by using fans of various sizes right but it create the noise that we are well aware so there may be alternate arrangement like what we learn ahu air handling unit so that is the solution for this large diameter ceiling fans can provide air movement that is effective over a wide area but these things are uh, these things are uh, just the few points mentioned but when we go in deeper in that so that the ultimate solution is this particular what we learn 
H U N this. The air conditioning can be deployed. This can be ranged from small unit that lower the air temperature but do not control humidity. Some some type of uh, air conditioning unit can only lower the temperature, air temperature, but they can can't control the humidity levels. But the large unit must uh, may have the both the facilities as well as well, the temperature control, air temperature control, as well as the humidity control that can be possible. When air conditioning systems are used, we require to take care of uniform air distribution right throughout the workspace. Means the uniformity of the distribution of air should be properly implemented in that place. Air conditioning unit should be operated as per the manufacturer's instructions. Then the fourth engineering control we can deploy is evaporating cooling system. Evaporative coolers produce a moderate reduction in air temperature and increase the humidity. So this facility is provided by evaporative cooling system. The, op the operation, uh, the, they operate by passing hot air over the water saturated pad, pads and the water evaporation effect reduces the air temperature. By deploying this system, we can pass the hot air through the water saturated pad and the water evaporation effect will be reducing the air temperature. Then the fifth uh, thing that we can deploy uh, by control point of view or engineering point of view is the thermal insulations. There may be different types of thermal insulation uh, material, example uh, loose fields, rock walls and insulation boards etc. The material acts as a barrier which, uh, which uh, slows the heat flow in the summer and heat loss in the winter. So both the uh, benefits we can get by this thermal insulation. But it is only effective where there is a temperature difference between the inside and the outside uh, of the building or between two areas, areas inside the building. So insulation is also one kind of things. Then uh, now all these basics, when we, uh, now we are well aware with this comfortness. Now when we actually uh, go in uh, more, uh, a detailed point of view about the sum of the terms that they are mainly uh, required for building automation engineer point of view. Now we are focusing on it. What what do you mean does this air velocity? And, uh, so this these particular things are uh, actually the part of AHU. So this this particular thing is related with AHU. So the fans or the blowers are used to introduce or distribute recirculate and exhaust air in a building that we learned in last sessions right blowers or fans the checking air velocity periodically at various points assures that the air is being distributed as expected through the ventilation system so air velocity is the one of the important factor and we require to measure it periodically so the, how we can measure it? The measurement should be made on both the supply and the return side of the system. As there are two parts of this HU, the supply part and the return part. In both the places, this velocity should be measured. So how it can be measured? By using anemometers. A number of instruments are available, but typically the most popular uh, instrument is anemometers that reliably measures the air velocity or in uh, other application wind velocity and based on that measurement it also calculate the air flow or volume rate. The other uh, types of anemometer they can have the rotating type of vanes they can also measure the air speed also means air velocity can also measure and some type of anemometer directly measures the air speed based on how fast moving the air turns, the small windmill like device. So that this, uh, this uh, particular anemometer has a different types in that rotating wind type anemometer directly gives us air speed because by moving the number of turns. Then there is one more type of anemometer uh, that is stylus. Uh, stylus is directly used there that is called thermal anemometer technology that employ hot wires. So they, uh, uh, they, uh, in, inside of that 
uh, anemometer, there are hot wires or like a thermistors that compare the small changes in resistance and display it as an air velocity. So that change in resistance of that hot wire or thermistor is uh, calibrated as a air velocity. So anemometer plays the important role in measurement of air velocity. So these are some of the pictures of anemometers you can see uh, used for different purposes are different types of anemometer. Then the second is ventilation. The ventilation refers to the amount of fresh air supplied throughout the building. So fresh air we, uh, when we supply it to the building, it, it mainly, uh, mainly uh, 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 what we can say that have the proper ventilation in that building. So the rate of that fresh air supply is good so that we say that there is a proper ventilation. How it can be possible? In the interest of energy conservation, air is typically recirculated and mixed with some amount of fresh air at the air handler. So air handler unit in that what happened for the energy consumption uh, to reduce the energy consumptions so the, uh, the, uh, the return air can be reused that we already seen or it can be mixed with the fresh air. So recirculation is taken place so that their control is required. So this uh, American Society of Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning engineers uh, they develop one standard called 62, standard 62 that offers that offers detailed recommendations pertaining to ventilation in occupied spaces. So the measurement need to be made in all occupied spaces within the building. It is important to remember that in building with multiple real handling system, each system must be evaluated separately. So to have proper ventilation in the building. There are different measurement points. So multiple uh, air handling if systems are available. So for each system there should be ventilation or uh, fresh air measurement uh, facilities can be provided. A good indicator of proper ventilation. So how it how who who can measure this particular fresh air by measuring the level of CO2. A good indicator of proper ventilation in a space is the level of CO2. A natural byproduct of respiration, combustion and other processes. Elevated levels of carbon dioxide can be an indication that additional ventilation or outdoor air may be needed. So sometimes uh, we can also measure uh, the carbon dioxide and based on that we can also decide that the ventilation is required. So the one uh, figure is given in that it is uh, mentioned that the indoor, indoor levels should not be exceed more than 700 ppm for this carbon dioxide. To ensure that the building is properly ventilated, it is important to take CO2 measurement in occupied areas, air distribution zones at varying height and compare them to the outdoor levels. So where these things are placed, so that that is uh, clear here. So uh, uh, it should be at different occupied areas, air distribution zones and different heights and their comparison is required. 